it's a really tough sport, but that's part of its appeal, is to try and find the fun and the pleasure in really pushing yourself uh, and getting out of the bed when you are totally exhausted and the last thing you want to do is go and train. No matter how amazing the location is, like that is all dead to us when your body doesn't want to do any more. But that's when you've got to just get out there and push and know that hopefully your opposition, you know, when they come up to those days might be a little bit weaker. So that's where, that's where the fun of it comes. As soon as you're in rowing and have an awareness of the sport, the Olympics you know is at the very top. Like you need to make it real um, and break it down to say it's just another race. Because when you go onto the start line, you don't want to be overawed by it. You know, it is just a piece of water. Um, it's my boat, my crewmates, my blade. So I race it kind of knowing how good my crew is and not trying to be phased by that. I'd watched Olympic medal ceremonies since I was a kid and you have all the, the trappings of an Olympic medal ceremony because it is one, but it's weird that you're there and all your mates are next to you. Sort of the bubble pops as soon as you've done your job and you recognise that you know, you're know you at the Olympics, so that's quite cool. It's a big boat. Uh, there's nine people, there's eight rowers, one cox, plus you're probably going to have one or two coaches. So you're dealing with quite a large number of people for, for a rowing event. So when I go to a, a group of guys, I want to try and motivate them and you know, bring out their best points. And likewise, I feel like I am uh, better than I would be by myself. Individually, you'll get there in different ways. So I'm definitely somebody who listens to a lot of music. Um, I'm quite internal. I want to get the headphones on and have the same playlist every time, They're getting pretty pumped up and stuff, but all you know, focused inside, so it's all quite like bubbling underneath the surface, I suppose. And then you want that to kind of explode out when you're, when you're racing. I was reading a review about um, someone talking about companion pieces, and so they're the kind of things you just always find you go to and you use, like, and particularly good design is important for that. And I think the Muro for me is the one that I use every day and it can come with me on training camps as well so it just sticks in the bag really easy and like, it doesn't take a lot, of, a lot of space but has good performance but also kind of in your hotel room and stuff like that so that's the one I, I sort of rely on the most. In London uh, it was a really tight race we were always playing second fiddle to the German eight they were really dominant that whole Olympiad actually so we were committed that even if it cost us the whole race and we came last we were gonna 100% go for the gold we were you know less than a second probably uh, tenths of seconds away from not even getting onto the podium. So that was really quite kind of crushing to be honest. Like we were going for that gold and uh, we were probably the most unhappy podium pitches you'll ever see. And then four years later, it was a totally different story. Um, we smashed out into this awesome rhythm and on crossing the finish line in Rio, I was just I guess I was like just totally empty, completely drained, like no energy, and it was just a bit um, surreal, I suppose. Uh, and you just sort of took it in rather than actively celebrate. <laughs> I think probably the thing which will stay with me, you know, till my grave will be the start line of the Olympics. Cause it's just a massive buzz. You know that there's 15 years of work, there's eight years of national team, which is, you know, the toughest possible training you can do. Um, sacrifices you've made, like your loved ones, like can be quite selfish and it all comes down to that single day and that single race, so it's about five minutes, six minutes depending on conditions. So we, we obviously are now, you know, Olympic champions and we won the Olympics in that crew, that eight, and, but the paths to get there and the journeys which people took are very different and you know, some people have been in the team for kind of over a decade and some people, this is their first Olympics and then so as well as the paths to get there, the paths afterwards are going to be very different. But you will always be able to come back to that time when you've, you won the Olympics together. Like a lot of people will ask, you know, whether you're going to carry on or not. And I think it's important just to, to get, to take the time to make that decision. Because it's going to be, when you train, it's very, very tough. Um, the selection's brutal. So I'm still trying to figure out whether or not I'm going to go for Tokyo at the moment.
I quite like the quiet satisfaction when you come back home, you know, things start to move on, you go to your day-to-day -day life and then every now and again you can think back and say, I'm Olympic champion um, and it's, it's come off.